Hey, welcome back everybody. One of the things that I get a lot of questions on is how to do things with lighting in 3D and lighting in just general. So I wanted to do a video kind of based around setting up your own three point lighting system and how they kind of function and work and what sort of things we're looking for when we're setting up one of these. Three point lighting is one of the fundamental things that you should learn when you start to work in 3D, especially when you're getting to rendering your projects out and setting up your characters or whatever it is you're trying to render. Three point lighting is the kind of first step to really setting yourself up for a very nice clean render so today we're going to talk just about that we're going to go through setting one up and the different kind of configurations that i'll use when i'm setting up my three-point lighting systems in arnold and we'll go over what each light does in the scene and how it affects our objects so without holding you up for too long if you haven't yet please like the video subscribe to the channel it does help and let's go ahead and jump into this video all right, so we have Maya open. This is an old skull that I made a couple of years ago, probably almost 10 years ago now, but it works really well for lighting just because we can kind of see all the depth and cavities. Um, so don't pay attention to how bad this model is, but you know we're gonna be looking at just kind of what our lighting is. So when you're setting up a scene like this, you might be trying to figure out how you want to render things and how you want to set up your actual renders and, and you know make this look good. Because right now, if I go and render this, we just have this kind of overhead light that's just illuminating everything. And like, you know, it looks neat, but there's really no form to it. There's no actual like direction to this. And so we want to kind of fix this. We want to make this a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to turn off our renderer. We're going to go ahead and set up a key light. We're going to keep the overhead light, but what I want to do is just kind of turn it off. So we'll go down here and we'll just set this to zero. That'll shut that light off technically. All right, so we're gonna set up what's called our key light. If you're unfamiliar with a three-point lighting system, you have three lights. Just like the name entails, we're setting up three separate lights. You have your key light, your fill light, and your backlight. And the first light we're gonna be focusing on in this, and the first light we're gonna be focusing on today is the key light. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a key light now. So we'll go to our rendering. We're gonna hit an area light. I generally use area lights. You can technically use kind of whatever light you want to, depending on like what look you're going for. Um, I wouldn't recommend things like these point lights just because they kind of broadcast instead of having like a focused light. So there's a couple of things we can do here. So we're going to set this up. One of the tools you can do if you want to really kind of lock in where you're looking is you can do T. T is going to give you the ability to just kind of drag a pointer and then place it wherever you want your light. So I know I want this light kind of hitting the front of the skull. And so now whenever I move this, the light, oop, now whenever I move this, the light's gonna follow that point and it's gonna aim there. So we're gonna go ahead and just move that slightly there. That's probably cool. And then we'll go in here and we will turn on our renderer. So we'll turn on Arnold. And you'll notice we get nothing. That's because we haven't set our light up yet. So we're gonna go into our Arnold tab here in the attribute editor. And we're gonna just go up to 10 first. So that's pretty good. Um, it's it's really bright. We're getting a lot of highlight over here. So we're gonna try to kind of bring this in a little bit. So let's go viewport. So I wanna actually kind of raise this up and bring it a little bit closer. And then our ground plane can actually kind of come down a little bit too. Uh, we don't necessarily need the ground plane. It just kind of helps. So let's look at this. We're gonna just plainly focused on the skull actually. So we'll go renderer, Arnold. All right, so we have our key light. So the key light is illuminating this portion of the skull, right? So this entire side is getting really brightly lit. But over on the left side of the skull, we're losing a lot of detail. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this light and kinda of even this out. So first thing, we're gonna take our key light and I'm gonna just drop the intensity down to nine just to Drop it a tad bit because it's a little bit too bright for me. And then I'm going to duplicate it by doing Control D. I'm going to do that same setup with T and just drag it right there. And so this one can be this one can be set up in whatever orientation. I like to generally just drag it off so it's a little bit catty corner to the left, just that way we get that even illumination. This is where we're gonna drop this again. So this light is going to be, we're gonna do seven. And actually what we'll do is we'll hit it to zero for now. So let's go to our renderer and I'll show you how this works. 
So we have, you know, our key light still affecting our scene. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna hit seven. You're gonna see how that just kind of evens out our lighting a little bit. So it's actually evening it out a little bit too much for me. So I'm gonna do six just so it stays a little bit dark. We just want a little bit of illumination there just so we have some of this depth, not so much in like dark shadow, but we're still maintaining the kind of visualization of the skull. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up our backlight. This light in itself is going to sit behind the skull and cast light forward. That light coming forward is going to create kind of a ring of light around the object. So we'll do the same thing. We're gonna just control duplicate. And you know, you don't have to create new lights every single time. I usually just duplicate. We'll hit T to adjust to where this points. And then this is where we'll do some adjustments. So we're gonna have this pointing directly at the back of the skull here. And so this one's currently set up to six, just like the other one. We're gonna set it to zero. And we're gonna go and hit render. Arnold. All right, so we have our, our light so far. Let's go ahead and start increasing the exposure on our backlight. So if I hit five, not much changes. But if I go up to say nine, we start to get that really nice rim light on the back. So what we're looking for here is this really nice kind of light. And this can be, depending on like how you're rendering this, you can change the direction of this. So if we move this over here, you can see how this rim light kind of highlights the back of the skull and gives us more of that look that we're looking for. So this is kind of, this is what's nice about a backlight is we can kind of change depending on like how we're trying to light the scene. Sometimes I'll keep the fill light and the backlight in the same kind of light plane that way you get that nice overall lighting over here. We're not super oversaturating the shadow. We're still keeping these shadows, but we're also allowing ourselves to have a little bit more like detail and depth in the back. And so this gives us a really nice kind of preview of like what we want our lighting to be. So this is the basic setup of a three point lighting system. This is what you would want to configure to get nice, even clean lighting on your models. You could do a lot with this. There's um, depending on like what you're doing with your scene, you can also add in things like a bounce light. Bounce lights are super cool for just adding a little bit of additional detail to your scene. So we'll, we'll go ahead and create one real quick actually because I feel like they're one that I use a lot. So a bounce light basically just mimics the light as if it were bouncing off of like a really reflective surface like a mirror or tile or something like that. And so a lot of the times I'll use a bounce light just to kind of cast some additional light up and you can see how this works. So if we go back to our renderer, go to Arnold, we'll just go ahead and kind of increase our exposure here. So if I go by three, don't really see much, but if I go by six, six, we're starting to see a little bit and then nine. So nine's kind of creating that casting up. So this would be if you're sitting over like a photo review table, you've got the light casting up on you, um, but that's not really what we want. We just kind of want that, that faint bounce so something a little bit closer to like six, I think. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of delete all the other lights and you can see what this is doing. So this is creating this nice, subtle kind of framing light. This would be your lights coming in from whatever direction and it's bouncing up. And so you're not getting the full blast of the light. You're just getting the bounce. This just creates kind of a nice, clean bounce that may look like it gets lost but the nice thing is is that you can render this out as a separate AOV and you can then take that and you can play with the lighting itself and say you want to have more and pull it in more you can actually increase the brightness of that so a bounce light is really good for an additional light in a three-point lighting system um, technically yes it doesn't make it a three-point lighting system anymore but this is one of the tools that I'll use a lot of the times to get just a little bit of extra detail in my builds and so if I bring those lights back, one of the things that I like to do is bounce light is never really the same color that it was coming in. So technically if you had like blue light coming in, it's gonna bounce off in like a teal or something like that. Like it'll be a, it'll be a lighter hue of what it was. So bounce lights are really cool for playing with color. And you can see them a lot better when you do this too. So you can kind of just play with this and add a little bit of blue light. So we get a little bit of bounce from that. Nothing too crazy. And you can really kind of visualize it with the blue. Uh, and maybe that you decide that with it colored, that's just too much. 
but you can just kind of play with that and just adjust it. So you can see now we have this really nice even lighting. We've got the, the really nice rim light. This is what we're trying to kind of replicate every time we do a 3D scene. Uh, this is the general kind of starting frame set that I'll use when I'm building out my projects. And we can go over what each one of these does. We'll just go to our light editor. Windows, rendering editors, light editor. And we can disable all of our lighting. Okay, so I'm gonna move this off to the side, but if you didn't know what this is, this is called your light editor. This is what we use to kind of control multiple lights in the scene. Really easy for turning lights on, turning lights off. I'm just gonna move it off so you can actually see what's happening here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our key light. So key light, again, illuminating it's gonna be your most powerful light in the scene. This is where you wanna get most of your light from. It's not always going to be off to the right or off to the left. Sometimes it'll be in the center, depending on what you're doing. This is where you get to kind of play artistically and decide like where your key light sits. But you can see that's what our key light's doing. Turn the key light off and we will turn on our fill light. Our fill light, again, just adds a little bit of additional light. It's a much lighter light but it adds just a little bit more light to the scene just so that the darker shadowed areas have a little bit more illumination. Because unless you're going for like a super dramatic, like hard light, you wanna make sure that you're softening your shadows as much as possible. So this way we kind of, we still keep the darkness aspect of it, but we're softening our shadows a little bit. Cause if I turn my key light back on, again, we still have these shadows, but they are still slightly illuminated. That's what we're going for there. So we'll turn both those off and our fill light. Fill light again is just a backlight, you know? All it does is light the back of the object and it creates that nice rim look. The other nice thing we can do is we can just take it and we can adjust wherever it's sitting. And this is how we can kind of control what that rim's doing. If we wanted it more up top. So really this can sit wherever you want it to, just dependent on how the scene is. And then when we turn everything, or we turn that off and we got our our little bounce light. You can see the bounce light is just adding that tiny little bit of pop of color. Again, this is something you would want to use if you were working in like a reflective environment or like a really white environment. So um, server room would be a good example. Server room tiles are generally white. They reflect light. They make everything much brighter. So this would be a tool that you'd want to use to kind of bounce that light up because in 3D replicating that sometimes doesn't necessarily work using materials. So it does help to use a light so you can actually control the amount of bounce that you have coming up. And then we'll just turn them all back on. And we have our nice evenly lit model. And then for any other minor adjustments, like sometimes I'll take my top over or my, my overhead light, which would be anything above like fluorescent lighting or whatever. And we can turn that on. So you can just kind of see how adding these different lights kind of helps you play with the way your model is lit and the way your shadows are working. Really the goal here is just to learn what each light does and what we can do with them. Because once you figure out like, okay, so my key light is my most powerful light. My fill light is just going to be filling in my shadows. And my backlight is really just kind of locking the scene in and separating the subject from the background. These are all really important things to know because then after that, you can kind of just go ham with it. You can do whatever you want with your lighting. Um, but they're just skills that you should understand when it comes to getting started with lighting your projects because a lot of the times what we see is we get projects that people spend a lot of time modeling and texturing, but then they do their final renders and you look at them and they're just really flat and kind of dull. So we want to avoid that by doing lighting in a way that makes sense and in a way that is technically correct. And this is the way that you should be kind of looking at this and establishing how you want to light your models. And this works in every way possible. So if you had a prop lying on a table, you'd want your backlight behind your prop illuminating that way. And then you'd have your, your lights kind of above the prop. So like really the location of the lights doesn't really change. It's more so the angle. So you'd be rotating your lights up, rotating your lights down, depending on what you're doing. So I hope this video helped you out. I know lighting is one of those things that a lot of people tend to get kind of confused on. So I hope that this can kind of give you a little bit of
better idea on how lighting works. And this is something I always suggest people play with, especially if you have your own models, like play with your lighting, do fun things with it. I'm gonna try to do some more videos on lighting on achieving different effects and we'll do the same kind of setup here because there's a lot that you can do with the lights inside of Arnold and inside of Maya that a lot of people don't necessarily know that you can do with them. Like there are a lot of effects that we can achieve just on lighting alone. One of the biggest things you have to understand is like the reason our media and the reason our movies look as good as they do is a lot of the times comes down to lighting and camera setup. So we, so I want to start introducing some of these concepts to you guys because they're really important to know. And there's something that gets missed a lot because people are like, well, I can make the 3D model and that's somebody else's job. It's something that you should understand. As an artist who does 3D, you should always understand lighting in some form. You do not have to be an expert in it, but you should in some form be able to understand and work with lighting. So again, I hope this video helps. If you found it enjoyable and you'd like to support the channel further, you can join our Patreon where you get exclusive access to channels in the Discord. You get a free model every month and you get a producer credit in every single one of my videos. If that's something that you feel like you're interested in, please go ahead, the link's in my description. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.